Let's now examine the option tab of the EDI profile. You can select the options tab to define your EDI profile. In order to help us understand the options tab, I have displayed the 850 EDI for abc.edi file and my notepad. This is located on the other side of my screen. Take a quick look at how we can figure out the information that we need to create our files. Now, what we're looking for over here is the standard. We're going to know what our standard is. It's going to be either X12, Edifact, HL7, or User Defined. For the file types, we have two types. We have data positioned and delimited. Data position means that everything from 1 to 15 is the name, 16 to 35 is the address, and so on and so forth. With the limited, it means that there is a character of some sort that's actually dividing each field, and that is what we're using is the delimiter. There's quite a number of different delimiters. All EDI X12 files use a star, but we'll go through the various delimiters when we go in and set up our options tab. The segment terminator is how we are terminating each line. We're going to be using a tilde for that. X12 uses tildes. And the last one is the composite delimiters. And this is going to vary based upon trading partners. We'll go in and discuss that more when we set up the options tab in our activity. And down here we have our version information. This is already set up for you. However, this is going to contain the version type the version itself and the transaction type. The version can be found in the GS line, which is going to be 4010. The transaction type is contained in the ST line, and here it is listed as 850. We have a number of options known as the X12 options that are below the version information. This contains the interchange control standard. We have two available to you. It can be U, which is the EDI user community of AS12, TDCC, and UCS, which is the default, or X, which is, which is the US EDI community of ASC12. We're using X, and you can find that information in your S12 envelope, uh, the next to the last field. We have a couple of others. Uh, these are checkboxes. Do you want to use the start and end? You can check this if you want to put a start or end segment on each loop. Ignore undefined segments. If you check this, the system will ignore any undefined segments before or after each loop. And then to ignore the undefined. If this is checked, the system will ignore any undefined data elements and will not generate an error. The X12 options are rarely used. They are legacy support at a version called version 3X. Probably someone is using it, so therefore we have uh, the X12 options defined here. So now I'm going to demonstrate exercise number three to configure the EDI profile options, and I'm going to do class activity number one, which is to import the EDI profile into the 850 EDI to database map. This begins in your book on page 13, and it will go up to page 15. I have the EDI profile on one side, and I have the file, the 850 EDI or abc.edi file on the other side. So I can take a look at the file and choose my options. As I mentioned, the standard is going to be X12, but we also could use Edifact, HL7, or User Defined. The type can be data positioned or delimited. We're going to go with delimited. Because it is a delimiter, we need to define the file delimiter. In our case, the delimiter is a star. So we'll just highlight the star, but it could be comma, tab, tick mark, bar, plus, colon, caret, ampersand, byte, or something else. The segment terminator, the default is no end character. But we actually do have a, a segment terminator. It's on the end of each segment. It is a tilde. And it's all the way over here. So we want to make sure we select it. And finally, the last one is the composite delimiter. In your book on page 13, we have an excellent description of the composite delimiter that I'd like to go over with you. It says the composite delimiter sets the delimiter between the composites within the segments. 
It is contained in the spec and it is not used in X12 processes. So therefore we tend to use the default of a colon. The composite delimiter is mostly used in Edifact. So we're going to be doing X12, so therefore we're gonna select the default, which is going to be a colon. Now you wanna make sure the following fields are entered. We have the version, the transmission, the transaction functional ID, which is a PO, and then the version control number. If this is incorrect, you can click on the magnifying glass and then you can search and search the documents and it will be populated. So at the end of this are our X12 options. We do wanna make a change to this. We wanna change the interchange control standard. We're using U, which is the default. We wanna make sure that this is an X. The other fields are not being used, so we will not be checking them off. This concludes exercise number three to configure the EDI profile. Now I'm going to continue with class activity number one. However, if you would like to do this on your own and then come back and see how it works, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to save and close. And we're going to go into our Walgoods 850 inbound create. And when we go into and we enter the map, what we will see is that the database has been set up for us, the database profile, but our profile, which is the EDI profile, has not been set up. So what we're going to do is select our EDI profile. It defaults as database, so we'll select EDI, and we'll path down, and here's our Walgoods 850 profile. We will select it, and we will populate it. So now we have both our source and our destination. So now we have our source and our destination. Now it's your turn to do exercise number three to configure the EDI profile options and class activity number one to import the EDI profile into the 850 EDI to database map. This begins in your book on page 13 and it ends on page 15. When we return, we will be discussing how to map in EDI.